Hi and Assalamualaikum uh, We from group 10 I'm uh, gonna present about Fiduciary nature of trusteeship So our group member is uh, Daniel Haziq, me Muhammad Haziq Kuan Mohozi, Mustatira Nurul Ain Shahada and Syari Shafiq So enjoy the video Well says in general That you should get Advice from a financial advisor That's in your best interest That's what a fiduciary is And Uh, the fiduciary rule was put out by the DOL to say that any retirement advice that you're getting has to be in your best interest or if there are conflicts of interest that those conflicts need to be disclosed to you. So if, you're, if, if, if your advisor is getting paid by the product that they're selling to you, that should be made clear to you. That's obviously a good thing for consumers and there is no disagreement about this actually. People on both sides, people for it and against it, agree that consumers will make more money if the fiduciary rule is in place. $20 billion dollars is the estimate. Uh, and those against the fiduciary rule, their argument is that by disclosing these conflicts of interest, by disclosing the fees that customers are actually paying, consumers will lose choice. It's not, not true at all. They'll still have the choice. They can still choose to pay those fees. The rule doesn't impact us. We're going to continue doing what's right for customers, and we always have. I mean, this is about We see something that's good for investors. We stand up for investors. That's part of our mission as, as, a, as a company. And, uh, and so, of course, we're going to go out and we're going to advocate for us. Hello, my name is Mohamed Yazid Nwendi. My name is DIL 202005. Today, we're going to present about Fiduciary Nature of Trusteeship. So, I'm going to present about the introduction. Introduction. A fiduciary is a person or organization who act on behalf of another person or persons placing the interests of their clients ahead of their own and is obligated to maintain good faith and trust. Being a fiduciary entails being legally and ethically obligated to act in the best interest of the others. A fiduciary may be responsible for another general well-being. Child legal guardian. Although the responsible is frequently financial in nature, such as managing the assets of another person or group of people, fiduciary responsibility applies to money managers, financial advisors, bankers, insurance agents, accountants, executors, board members, and corporate officials. That's all from me. Thank you. Hi and assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Zikwan Bin Fauzi. Number metric DIL 201063. So today I'm gonna present and explain uh, about the remuneration under fiduciary nature of trusteeship. So the general principle is that a trustee should not entitle for any remuneration unless it's authorized by a trust instrument, court or state. This law is based on the notions that trustees are not authorized to profit from trust property and that paying them could lead to conflicts of interest and the relocation, the relocation of duty. In case of Barrett uh, against Harley 19, uh, 1866, a trustee who had managed the trust business for some six years with considerable success nevertheless failed to secure remuneration for his personal efforts in managing the So uh, uh, next, as stated before, uh, the remuneration uh, can be authorized by the trust instrument, uh, court and statute. So the first one is the remuneration uh, authorized by the trust instrument uh, or settler is one of an exception which is through involvement of a remuneration clause. This is considered as bounty for settler which benefit the trustee under trust. The form of clause, which is charging clause, are construct strictly against the trustee. In the case of Ray Chappell, it is a clause in the trust instrument saying that trust can charge for usual professional charge, which is a remuneration for solicitor's professional service and not trustee remuneration. Furthermore, uh, the remuneration on authorized by the court, meaning under its inherent jurisdiction, the court can authorize the payment of remuneration to a trustee, whether or not the trustee was appointed by the court. 
the payment of remuneration may be permit either prospectively or retrospectively and the trust instruments authority extend to increasing the remuneration approved although the existence of the jurisdiction is undeniable it has been suggested that it should only be used in extraordinary circumstances according to, according to Red Duke of not folks st trustee is allowed the trustee to claim more than what they have already agreed upon for the extra skill and experience need for the trust which is unique that is necessary for the benefit of the beneficiary the court will have the to consider this in giving their jurisdiction and lastly the remuneration by statute uh, refer under section 35 Clause 2 of Trustee Act 1949. A trustee may reimburse himself of pay or discharge or out of the trust premise all his expenses incurred in or about the execution of the trust of powers or powers. More, 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 moreover, under Section 46 of Trustee Act 1949 power to authorize remuneration, the court may allow any trustee other than public trustee such remuneration for his service as trustee as the court may think fit. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Syaril and my metric number is DIL 2020-23. So, I'm going to be presenting about secret profits. So, what is secret profits? Secret profit is any benefit got by a trustee will be considered as an approved benefit which incorporates coincidental and secret benefits. A trustee as a rule ends up getting accidental benefits when the trustee get a commission by guiding the trust to a specific organization. For reference, we can look at the case of William vs. Burton. A trustee had an agreement with a financial firm under which he got a commission on work for customers that he had acquired with them. The court then at that point concluded that the trustee was responsible to the trust for the commission he pursued by guiding the trust business to the firm. Next, we can also look at the case of Islamic Republic of Iran shipping lines versus Denby. In the case, a specialist acknowledged a commission of $200,000 from the contrary side for getting the settlement of a lawful activity brought by his customer. Lekat J said what he got was essentially a payoff and he was responsible to pay the aggregate to his customer. This shows that trustee who have gotten such mystery benefits are at risk to pay the recipient of the trust store the sum which they have benefited from. And I think that's all from me. I'm gonna pass it to my friend for for the presentation. And thank you. My name is Ms. Lutira Pinti Mogul Ulkanuri, metric number DIL 201053. So I'm going to explain about the virtual of the duty. So, uh, uh, a breach of the duty appeals and the principal fails to act responsibly in the best interest of the client. So the consideration of a breach of fiduciary duty are multiple because they can range from reputation damage to loss of a license and monetary penal penalties. So, the jury audition for a large number of beneficiation, which means many persons speak on the fiduciary obligation for a large number of beneficiation. Among them are uh, attorneys working on behalf of clients, corporate executive ethics, and on behalf uh, of stockholders, uh, guardians acting on behalf of their awards, financial advisor acting on behalf of investors, and trustees acting on behalf of estates. Penetration. So, an employee may have a fiduciary obligation, uh, obli obligation to his or her employer. Employees have a right to anticipate that their employees are working in their best interest, not rewarding trade secrets, uh, secrets and exploiting corporate equipment for a personal gain or 
clients or coaching clients uh, for a competitor so that expectation may not be identified as future obligation but they may be written out in an employee handbook or contract provision which means which means which of this part, uh, partnership is going to so uh, but a breach of fiduciary responsibilities arise in all situations when a principal uh, fails to behave properly in the best interest of a client according uh, uh, like like that so like according to a case law breaches of fiduciary responsibilities most commonly occur when a binding fiduciary uh, fiduciary relationship uh, relationship is in place and activities are made that contradict or or counterproductive or to the interest of a specific client so um, which means typically the acts are said to have benefit benefited the fiduciary or a, or a third party interested rather than the interests interest of the client which means a breach has sometimes result from a principal's inability to give critical information uh, information to a client so resulting in misunderstanding misinterpretations or bad advice like that so uh, if in any event in a fiduciary relationship full disclosure of uh, disclosure of any possible conflict of interest is critical since any conflict might be seen as a reason of a breach of trust so that's all from me i pass to the next presenter thank you Hi and Assalamualaikum to Madam. My name is Nurul Anishwa Damiti Fatah and my magic number is DIL201042. So I'm going to present about the remedy for breach of fiduciary duty. The remedies for breach of fiduciary duty can be divided to two which is personal remedies against trustee and proprietary remedies available to the beneficiaries. For the personal remedies against trustee, it consists of three remedies which is measure of liability, investment and interest. Firstly, for the measure of liability, when there is a breach of trust, directly or indirectly, there will be interest. If there is unauthorized profit, trustee will have to account for profit. Trustee will be liable only for losses arising from the breach of trust. There are no insurer to the trust property. This can be illustrated in the case of Dimes and Scott, where they are not allowed to save off set of profit made once the sessions again lost in another. Such profit belong to the beneficiaries. Trustee cannot claim the profit just to lessen their own liability for loss caused by a breach. This will not apply if profit and loss can be seen to be part of the same transaction. The second remedy is investment. If trustee make an authorized investment, they will be liable for any loss which is incurred when the investment is realized. Moreover, where unauthorized investments are improperly retained, the measure of liability is the difference between the present value of the investment and the price. If trustee are directed by trust instrument to make a specific investment but they either make no investment or invest some way, they will be liable to supply the, uh, the amount of the specific investment had they invested at proper time. Furthermore, a trustee used trust money for his own business are liable to hold for profit. And lastly is interest, which is replacing the loss with interest. The traditional rate is 40% but could be also be liable for higher rate at the discretion of the court. Other remedies available is proprietary remedies. It is a kind of remedy where the plaintiff can claim that property in the hands of the defendant is to be treated as that of plaintiff. It is not the same as real remedy. It entitles the plaintiff to treat any property, usually money, in the hands of the defendant as being the plaintiff to the extent that he can claim repayment in full regardless of the defendant's insolvency. In conclusion, the analysis of the case law showed that the relationship between trustees and beneficiaries is undoubtedly based on the principle of trust and confidence which create fiduciary duties. Currently, the governing laws in the available statutes and instruments creating the trust do not directly address the fiduciary nature of trustees, duties and powers. Therefore, the fiduciary nature of trustees is addressed by referring to the principle of equity and trust as embodied in numerous judicial decisions of the court of law. Lastly, it is crucial for the trustees to be aware of the real responsibilities of trustees that they carry and the importance of observing their exercise of power and duties to ensure that their actions are in line with the principle of trust and equity. So that's all from our group. Thank you.